Hey everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. Over the years, I have shown many different ways to be able to set up and cut the dados and rabbits in your projects. Well, the one thing that I've never shown is this quick and easy little tool. It's a kerf maker. And I want to show you with just a few little scraps how to make this today to get the perfect dados. Now I've taken two pieces of scrap wood and these are about six inches long and I'll cut these to the final length in a moment. But what I'm going to do is just a little half lap on each of these so that these will actually go together. I'm using the router to be able to do this. One, because it's very easy to be able to have it set up and two, with the dust collection, it takes all the dust away and it's really pretty easy. Now keep this in mind. We're cutting the half lap on two pieces of wood. So when you set the depth of that rudder bit, just remember that you're cutting it twice. So it goes twice as fast. And that can just sneak up on you real quick. And all of a sudden you've gone beyond that halfway point. So I check it often. I make small adjustments. And I will cut this several times to be able to get to that final depth of an actual half lap. At this point I've made multiple cuts and I've just increased the height ever so slightly. And you can see now I'm down to a very, very small amount. So remember, it's a very small amount that you can raise this bit because this is where if you raise it too much, the whole thing's blown and you have to start over. So it's a very tiny amount to be able to do these two cuts and just like that, if you look at this, it's almost perfect. There is a tiny little bit that I needed to be able to take off. So you can see just how small amount that I turned that screw to be able to raise that bit. And again, because I'm doing two of them, it really doubles the amount. So let's take a look at this one more time and let's see how well that it did. And if you look at that now, it's perfectly smooth and flush on each side. So that's perfect. I want to cut an end that will glue on to this. It'll be that thickness, the same thickness as the material, and I want it the same length. But I also want this to be thinner. So I'm going to cut this the length that I want it. We'll just slide that over just like that. And then we'll cut this piece. Because this is a very small piece, I'm using the pencil and actually the eraser side of that pencil to be able to hold that block in place. That way the fingers stay away from that blade and that holds it perfectly in place. And that's the safest way to be able to cut these little bitty small parts. At this point, I have the correct length, but it's really too wide. Now the width of this really doesn't matter. This is a type of jig that you can make just about any way that you want. So I'm just using no tape measure at all. And I'm just using that little piece of wood as a spacer. And that's going to allow me to cut a nice little thin strip to be able to glue to the end of my jig. Again, I used a pencil as the hold down so that those parts would not go anywhere. And with that on there like this, this will glue on to the end. And that will be perfect. And then I'll make this where it will slide. And that will be exactly what I need. So I'm going to grab the CA glue and glue this tip onto the end. Now I'm going to use the medium CA glue with the accelerator and both by Starbond. And don't forget, I do have a discount code in the description below so that you can take advantage of that. When you use a CA glue, you really don't need a whole lot. And I'm using a little bit extra this time, only because this is the end grain of this wood. And I know that the CA glue is going to soak into that end grain. So by adding a little bit extra, I'm hoping that it's just going to hold a little bit better. I'm not sure if that's really going to uh, be accurate or not, but that's what I chose to do. Then I sprayed the accelerator on the other piece and put the two together. And we're going to hold this now for about 15 seconds, and that will take care of it. Now I'll put these two pieces together. We'll test it out. 
that bottom piece will just slide right up next to the piece that I added and that's going to work perfect. That's exactly what I want it to be able to do. So now that I have this where it will slide perfectly, I want to be able to trim this off and make sure that it's perfectly smooth. So I'm going to put this in the table saw. Now I want to remind you, the overall length really doesn't matter. What matters is that it's flush and it's perfectly even between these two parts when this is slid up to that little bump that stop that I put on there. That's the important thing. Now if you look at this, this will slide real easy. The end is perfectly flush and on the other end it will slide right up to that little bump stop that I put on there. And now I have to add a screw right here at this point and I'm just using a little number six uh, screw. It's a one inch long to be able to put in here. And what this will do is allow me to adjust and compensate for the curve or the thickness of the blade that's on the table saw. So I'm going to take that out of the way for the moment. I'm going to put this right up here at this location and we'll drill that hole. And then we'll screw this in. Now right now, I'm going to screw this in to where there's about an eighth of an inch exposed. And then we'll make the fine adjustments when we get just a little bit closer. But there's one more key element that we're going to need. We need a way to be able to lock this tight. So I'm going to put a screw with a washer in it right here that will clamp onto this and hold it. Now, I have to tell you, I thought about several different methods to be able to hold this in place. From this little small wood screw with a um, washer, and then I decided just to go ahead and use a quarter inch screw. So I took the quarter inch bit over to the drill press, and I'm drilling this almost all the way through. You can see it's not quite coming through. And the reason being is I want to take a Forstner bit and countersink this, and that little uh, dot that's coming through will be the perfect registration point that I need to be able to countersink this. So I switched it out for a 3 8 inch Forstner bit and now I can countersink that. And that way the head of the screw will drop down and it'll be flush to that surface. I won't have to worry about that sticking up on the other side. Now again, I'm not measuring anything here. I'm just going down roughly about a quarter of an inch. It really doesn't matter. The only thing that I want it to have happen is that the head of the screw drops below the surface of the uh, jig. And that's really all that matters. And I can test it out right now just by dropping that in. And you can see I have plenty of depth. And of course, this screw is way too long. So I'm going to take the angle grinder and cut it down to the proper length. I wish I had the proper length screw, but I didn't, but the angle grinder works just fine. Now, as far as this screw, I use the CA glue to glue it into place. And now I have my washer on, wing nut, and that will tighten down and hold it exactly where it needs to be. To be able to use it, it's time to be able to put this to the test. The first order of business is to be able to adjust this set screw. I want to be able to adjust this to be able to get it to the correct kerf or the thickness of that blade because that's really the offset point. That's what we're trying to achieve. Now when we make the dado cut, realize that we're going to have to do some fine adjusting. And that's okay. That's part of this process. To use the jig, the first thing you do is you put your block of wood in there and you set that space. Now you put the other part that you're going to make the dado in and now this is the longest distance so we're going to cut that just like that and that's the first side of the dado then i'm going to rotate the jig and it's going to slide over to where the screw is and i'm going to run it through again and that will set the other side of the dado from there you just hog out the material in between and then we're going to check and see just how well that uh, this dado is going to fit. Now it may not be perfect yet because we still have to fine tune that little screw. Okay, we're all done with the dado. Let's see how it fits now. We can put that in 
and it works pretty well. It's still just a little bit loose. So what we need to do is just adjust that one more time to be able to get it. Now since it's loose, we need to unscrew that screw just ever so slightly to be able to make this a little bit better. And then we're going to repeat the process. We're going to cut another dado and we're going to test it out again because I want this to be a perfect fit. So you can see at this point I'm using again that long point of the uh, jig and then I lay it down on the side and that screw actually is touching my bump stop and that gives my left and my right side of the dado itself and then I'm just hog out the center and we'll test it one more time. Okay, that's all done. So let's now test it out. We'll turn off the saw. Let's take my little scrap piece of wood. We'll drop it in and that's looking good. Now you can see there's a tiny little bit of play. So I think we're gonna make one more adjustment and do a final test and I think that will do it. So you can see I just unscrew that ever so slightly. It doesn't take much to be able to make that change. So after a couple of tests and a little bit of adjusting, this is now perfect. So this jig now will work for every single dado that I need to be able to cut with this saw blade. That's perfect. I want to thank everybody for watching today. As you might expect, it's a little bit crazy this time of the year in the shop. But today I took the time to take some scrap wood and make this kerf maker. It's an excellent addition to the shop. I know I'm going to get quite a bit of use with it considering the different projects that I have that I need to make before Christmas. So if you like the video, by all means, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And while you're there, hit that little subscribe button right down there and the bell notification. I would really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the upcoming videos. So for now, bye-bye. See you real soon.